Hey guys, Brian here, and welcome back to Direct Admission. And today we have my best friend, Alex Keanu, who's also a nurse who went through a lot in the beginning of his career. He almost quit the whole profession twice. There's a lot of things going on. He moved away from me, his friends, his family, all to start anew in a new place. And we go over everything from work-life balance, nurses eating their youngs, and everything in between. So this is a really good one. I hope y'all like it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let's jump right into the video. So we have my best friend, Alex Kihanu, also known as Q, here with me today. And he's also a nurse. And we're just going to jump into it. I'm sure this is going to be a fun one because, of course, we haven't seen each other in a while. And mm -hmm. it's the first time talking a little bit. So, Q, if you don't mind just introducing yourself and uh, what do you do? And we'll just go from there. Well, my name is Q. Alex Q, that is. Uh, I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for what? Uh, five years now started off working at a bank and i was like wow this is miserable so i just followed the filipino uh culture and just went into nursing <laughs> and um i have regretted it ever since I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an up and down road for sure but um right now i'm working in long-term care and it's been good for me so far i started off in in a hospital in new york city and that was great right bry <clears throat> <laughs> yeah that was at the beginning of COVID, so I mean, it was mm -hmm. rough for everybody, but uh, that didn't last. And then I went into dialysis. That was fun. I did that for a couple of years. Went into management and dialysis. That was cool uh, until it wasn't cool anymore. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm in long term care. So that's me in a nutshell. So let's let, let's just backtrack. So um, we went to the same school, but at different times. We both went to UB. And then you, you were in, you were a psych major and then I went in for psych and then I got into grad school for mental health counseling. <clears throat> and then my first semester, I realized, holy shit, this is not, this isn't it. <laughs> this isn't it. <laughs> so <laughs> got out of that. And then I started working for Citigroup, which mm -hmm. was a major like uh 180. And then I, did that for a couple of years, but it was kind of miserable just being in front of a computer for 10 hours straight, like doing like mindless work. So I was like, I got to do a change. Like what made you change to nursing though? Like other than like the typical <laughs> Filipino, like, yeah, just do it. You know, you're naturally going to be good at it because you're Filipino. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> if I'm going to be completely honest, it was, it was the quickest route because I already had my bachelor's and I could just do the accelerated program. And I have been with my wife for like so long at that point. Right now, we're, we've been together for 19 years this year. And mm -hmm. we wanted to start a family closer to that point. And I was like, I got to pick a career that I know is going to give me an income that can support a family quickly. Mm -hmm. So I just went for nursing. And here I am. And the, yeah, uh, was the so I'm obviously I didn't go through an accelerated nursing school. My, my wife did. Well, Meg did. And um, how was that for you? Like super fast paced? That's all I really hear of it. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was quick. I mean, it was one of the quicker programs. Some programs go for like 16, 18 months. This was only a 12 month program. Oh, dang. I didn't know it was 12 months. Oh, it was yeah. only 12 months. And um, it was um, it was a real kick in the nuts. Wait, am I allowed to curse on this? Yeah, curse all you want, man. Okay. It was a real kick in the balls. So um <laughs> I was a very, like, I was studious as a student <clears throat> in, like, my bachelor's uh, previous, but... I was about to say, ah, we weren't that studious in high school. <laughs> Not in high school, but when, when I got into college, I kind of got, you know, my head together. Um, but then uh, getting into this program, I was like, it was very, like, it was a job. Like, it was 9 to 5 every day, Monday through Friday. Um, even on the weekend, you couldn't really do anything because you had so much homework to do. Because you probably had like a test on Monday or something, right? There was, was it like a test every day? Every week. Every, there was a test every week. Every other day, I think there was a test. <clears throat> oh, dang. I would hate myself. Um, I mean, it was good because my cohort was like, they were very close. Like, we were very close. So we all helped each other out. Even as we kind of started like 
the the herd started thinning out toward the end of the program we we just got closer and closer so that helped you know like i had a lot of really smart friends and they pushed me to get mm -hmm. smarter or at least try <laughs> harder <laughs> so i didn't look as dumb when i sat next to them you know so yeah, well well we could just be like those uh the people in the group project that just make everyone laugh and that's, <laughs> our, that's our value <laughs> that's what it was <laughs> We're, that's you know, the value that we have. I made everybody, Thank you people I was the class clown. And, um, <laughs> and it was good, you know? It, it got, there was like a scary moment, I think. I forgot what class it was. I think it was med surge or something, the second the second class for that, where I got close to failing out. Mm -hmm. And like, I had the pretty much like half the class like studying with me, like, you have to pass. <laughs> you have to stay. We need you. <laughs> <laughs> so like there's just all that like all that support and of course the support from family and friends that kind of just push you through something that hard you know so yeah and, it's and then, uh, yeah like I, that's what i can imagine like having all that like not it's not even spoon fed to you it's just i feel like they just give you for accelerated from what meg told me like they just feed you powerpoints and expect you to to learn yeah. it if anything it was more of like a memorization game Mm -hmm. like it's not so much learning things it's just memorizing them and it's just it's not great in terms of like then you get thrust into the world to start taking care of patients and expect <laughs> to know everything you learned in the last year and if there's anything that i wish there was more of it was more of like better clinical experiences because i didn't really have great clinical experiences mm -hmm. through that program you know so i didn't really feel like i was prepared when i got out into the real world and that's what I feel like is like, uh, like the closer you get to New York City for all like the nursing schools here, from what I've heard, they, I guess they just don't give good clinical experience. Or if you go to clinical, they don't let you do a lot of like hands on things. Whereas mm -hmm. when I was in Buffalo, they like, they treated you like you were a nurse. They're like, draw that blood, do this, do that. Like everything had a lot oh, of no. like hands on, no, no. like blood IV skills and all that when I left, because they're just like, I'll oh, just do it. Who's going to know if you're a student or not? <laughs> no, we couldn't do any of that. We couldn't draw blood. That was a big no-no during our school time, our clinical really? times. Yeah. And to this day, I'm still afraid to do peripheral <laughs> IVs. Like, Jesus. I mean, I was in dialysis for four years, but that's like throwing a hot dog into a hallway when it comes to, like, cannulating people. You know what I mean? So it's not the same thing. Now I do it a little bit more now that I'm in long-term care. I get to, to play around with people's arms. But um, not so much back then. So just just bringing it up, just going back in, like for, for I've thought about it a while. Like I've thought about it a few times. Like when I'm at work, I was like, did I see myself when I was like in high school becoming a nurse? And the answer is absolutely not. Because what me and you did a lot, we we played a lot of video games, we played a lot of sports. It's like it was gonna be one of those things. We had to, we were gonna go into some sort of sports medicine or mm. Or we were just born too early to become a professional gamer. Or oh my gosh, for sure. <laughs> if we let, let me just tell you, I, there was that point in time. I think it was like just as I was finishing up nursing school, where me and you were streaming mm -hmm. a lot on Twitch. I was like, shit, I made seventy dollars this month. I think I might make it. <laughs> I think I might be the next ninja. So I, I thought, oh man, I'm gonna. This, nur this nursing degree is total waste. Total I'm waste. Like, <laughs> what am I doing here? And then I started working and I was like, oh, actually, I don't have time to stream anymore. <laughs> so that was a, that was a dream gone by. Man. Yeah, I mean, you look at all these streamers like that are like super young, these, these young pro uh, video game players. And it's like, yeah, we really missed that boat. If we had this while we were in high school, we might have been, we might have been booga or like, <laughs> yeah or clicks all, or somebody like those yeah, cool any of those big guys things. like that's what i feel all the time like we could have been that we had the personality to do it yeah for sure look we're talking on interviews right now but we're not playing video games <laughs> Man, it is what we're it not is. Uh, we're not afraid of a camera <laughs> no we'll take what we can get at this point <laughs> of our lives <laughs> <laughs> so you, you got into the hospital that i work at my brother works at everyone works at Obviously, we didn't expect it to take that crazy turn into COVID where it just like it like shedded the workforce of the hospital. And obviously it just got 
the unit you went on was like a med surge, respiratory, dump fire, right? It had like six ICU beds and like 10 step down beds and like 20 mm -hmm. med surge beds. And it was just, it was a mess. And yeah. um, I am super grateful be, to be able to have the opportunity to work there. I mean, you and your family helped me get there. But I mean, it was just my, and this is the thing, like when people talk about nurses eating their young, that is such mm. a thing. Like my preceptor was not great. And um, she was she was a good nurse, but as far as precepting and like leading the next generation of nurses into the fray, like that just wasn't her specialty. She just didn't have the personality for it, and it it almost drove me away from nursing. Like you know me, Brian. Like you know yeah. me, like as like a guy that's like I'm I'm a man's well not man. <laughs> I don't do construction and shit, but, <laughs> but like I, I like when have you seen me cry? Right? Like yeah. I would literally come out of a shift and I would come home, get into my car and I'd start tearing up like, shit, is this what I want to do? Like mm -hmm. she makes me, she made me feel really stupid. And like, it got to the point where one day she was like, you really need to think about it if you want to do this for the rest of your life. Like if you want this to be in your career, because you know, you need to start doing better. You're not good at it right now. And like, you, you should start thinking about other options. And, what the heck? I went home that day and I was just like, man, maybe she's right. Damn, that's how bad it was that it like it it like like it made you start second guessing yourself. Mm -hmm. Damn. It was just like and I had to have a long sit down with Michaela, my wife, and she was just like, you know what? Maybe this place isn't it. Maybe she's not it but maybe there'll be a place somewhere else that you'll fit mm. in and be appreciated more so yeah i went in that the next day the next shift and i was like listen i'm putting in my two weeks this is yeah. i can't handle it here clearly and they were like oh you don't need to take two weeks just go home i'm like all right <laughs> yeah they paid me for the two weeks and that was it Dang. and i went into dialysis right after that <clears throat> and, and that's nice. that's that's a pretty cool thing because from what I've heard about dialysis. Most places aren't that willing to train. Like they just want people that have experience right. because it's like a, it's such a niche specialty. So mm -hmm. like, how did you find it? And they were willing to train you like right off the bat. Well, I, I got lucky off the COVID train. Uh, wow. It was right. It was around March or April of 2020. And like the nursing force was pretty much decimated at that point. So mm -hmm. everybody was kind of just, every company was, grabbing at straws trying to figure out like who they were going to hire and they knew I didn't have any experience but they were so willing to train me just because they needed people and it was just I was like all right sure why not and they were like come on board come on board and um, the rest is history granted the place that I was um hired to work at they couldn't train me because they had so few staff I would say more than half their staff were travelers Oh, dang. At, at that point. So I got trained in another facility, which was in uh, Valley Cottage, which is not too far. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I did get the training I needed <clears throat> and it ended up working out for the best. And then so how long did you how long were you the a dialysis nurse before you jumped into management? Uh, I would say a year and a half. <laughs> I was a dialysis nurse. And then um, the opportunity. And then I moved from New York to Pennsylvania during that time. Mm -hmm. And at the end, the clinic that I was at, the manager had just put in there two weeks. And I just thought, you know, why the hell not? I kind of know the, the gig here. Mm -hmm. is always pushing me to do something more because um, mm -hmm. you know, she always believed that I could be, you know, <laughs> more than what I am. Yeah, and I always thought back to what my manager back in New York in my dialysis clinic in New York would say. He, like, he said that I never pushed myself hard enough. I could have taken on more, but I just chose to like be comfortable where I was at. But always felt like I could do more. So I said, "Why not? I'll give it a shot." And um, uh -huh. it was good. It was good for the first couple months. Um, I think my biggest problem that I had as a manager was that I was too much of a people pleaser. And that mm. is a trait you cannot have in management because you cannot please everybody. And I constantly tried to, but um, it's because mm -hmm. it was, it was especially harder because like 
I was a coworker of theirs, like for a couple months leading into my management. So like they always just saw me as their coworker, and it was hard to kind of like break that barrier of, okay, now I'm your manager. Oh, that's it, yeah, that's hard. <clears throat> but it, it kind of it for a while it, it it did well. We did well with each other. I think it what really wore me down toward the end was um, the unrealistic goals of the company and how I couldn't translate that to what my clinic could bring to them uh my man my manager specifically was very um she was a always setting goals that were unattainable but that was on purpose like her goals were always higher than what the actual company goals were Mm -hmm. just so that we would get close to what the company goals were but in the end it just stressed all the managers out in her area because like she would still yell at us for not meeting her standards even if we were meeting company standards you know what i mean yeah you're still doing really well for the company but just she was like shooting for the stars on everything right right and um it got to the point where it stressed me out like i was i and for a facility that was as big as mine because i had <clears throat> like 120 some patients and that's pretty big for a dialysis clinic in the area and it was the biggest in her area by far like normally you'd have like a charge nurse to help you kind of like sort through all that stuff. I didn't have mm-hmm. one. I had a brand new secretary, so she was basically like not as helpful as I'd like. Um, mm-hmm. So I had to do a lot of like secretarial work. I had to do a lot of like work on the floor. I had to do- Yeah, you were telling me that you're still working as like a staff nurse too while you're being a manager, like yep. still doing a lot. Yep. And then to manage the expectations of a boss who's expectations are out of this world it's just it was a lot of stress and it it was a lot of stress to bring home and it was just not something that i wanted for me and my family so like was the pay worth it like was there a significant pay bump from staff nurse to manager that kept you there for as long as you did not really no you're just strictly doing it to be like let me just try it honestly a little bit i pushed myself i honestly did it to push myself and you know to like not gonna lie, pad my resume to show that I have the ability to be some sort of leader. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I mean, the job that I'm working at now, and if I pick up like a PRN thing here and there, like I'm making the same amount of money as I was as a manager. So, so it's not it, anything significant enough to be like I could do this a little bit longer, kind of thing. No, no. If anything, they really took advantage of me <laughs> in terms of what they. They paid me. Just bend over, boy. <laughs> Just bend over and take it. So, like, so since you're in that manager, you were in that managerial role. That's that's what I always question. Says obviously, I don't have the experience of that. Like that's like that's like the question I sometimes wonder. Maybe we'll try to get Mark on here because I know he's in that type of director type role. Like to have that responsibility, like I see that you had when you'd visit up here, you'd have people calling you about like sick calls and all that while you're up here. Like how, like, I, I don't see the benefit if there's not like a significant pay bump or like a bonus to have that type of responsibility when you're technically off the clock, you know, like when, when you're a staff nurse, you're there from seven to seven or seven to three, whatever your shift is. And then once you're done, you're done. it's done, you're done. Yep. And like the next shift, it's the next shift's problem or the next shift's thing, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. But being in that managerial role, you're like, you're on call 24 seven and that's tough. And that's the thing too. Cause like when you're on PTO, you, you have a covering manager. It's just that yeah. my staff hated all the other fucking managers. <laughs> so they like to call me and me being the people pleaser that I am would be like, yeah, I'm available to you guys 24 seven. What? <laughs> so, I honestly didn't mind taking those calls because mm-hmm. I loved, you liked your staff or something. I loved my staff. I loved my staff. I hated my manager. That was pretty much the story of my management experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're right. There's no significant pay increase. There's no there's no real benefit to do it other than to use it as a stepping stone for where you want to get like further mm-hmm. into, you know. For me, I was thinking maybe I would take up a director of operations role there. Mm-hmm. But um nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, I think at this point now I just kind of want to experience different things. 
Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to get into, like, a PRN role with, like, an OR or something just so I can, like, experience more of what nursing has to offer because I feel like there's things out there that I would really like but just haven't really gotten the chance to try out yet, you know? That, that's true. Like, that's why that's why I was, like, messaging you a lot. Like, hey, when are you coming back? Because <clears throat> we have a lot of openings in where I work and – I think you would be freaking perfect for it, especially if you worked with me. Oh, yeah. That... Oh, God. No <laughs> work would ever get done. What are you talking about? It would it, be so much fun to have you there because, like, it, it is, like, a, a very niche specialty. But I feel, for the most part, this, even though I've talked about it a lot, where the personalities where I work in the lab that I work in, very strong personalities, but for the most part, there isn't like eating your eating your young thing because mm-hmm. we know that if we have opening open positions, that means we need you. And if you're willing to work, we're going to treat you really well thing. And of course, there's certain benefits from being in like a niche area, like no weekends, no holidays. Oh, yeah, and then nice. a lot of other stuff that we could go into off uh, <laughs> off this. That's mm-hmm. why I was like, damn, you know, it'd be really dope to work with my best friend. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be fucking sick. And well, then, maybe you know, down the line when we make it our way back. Yeah, that's what we want to do. So, since you were saying like you wanted to go into other specialties or to see everything else, so after you quit the manager job, now you're at a long-term care facility. How did you get into that instead of like working like a hospital or something? It's where M- Michaela works, my wife. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I had already had. I needed something quick because like she didn't even let me put my two weeks in. She was just like, you're gone, my manager. So I was like, the second experience I had to have with that was like just being out of there. So I had to get something quick. And I already had it in with Mikhailo being at this place. And I already knew, like, I've spoken to the manager and the, the, what's it called, the administrator there. Mm-hmm. So I just had to call them. They set up an interview and I was hired in like you no know, time flat. I didn't have to wait for anything. So it was, you know, it, it worked out. And it's a... It's like, it's a really nice facility where like, it's like, it's a lot, a lot of the patients are private pay. No, all the patients oh, wow. are private pay. So it's like a high end facility. So it's a ho- It's basically a hotel. It doesn't even like, you know, you go into a nursing home. It's like, yeah, that's a nursing home. Yeah. It but smells like, like this when you walk in. Yeah. But you walk <laughs> into this place and it's like, it's legit like a hotel. And it's not just like a long-term like skilled facility. Like they have like apartments for independent living. They have houses oh. in the community. It's a gated community. Like you have to get scanned to get in. It's it's a pretty pretty swanky place. Like even for my meals, like like you would think like oh my god you're eating the food at your nursing job your place your yeah nursing home place. I'm like yeah fuck yeah they got like goddamn <laughs> filet mignon steaks they got scallops they got like all this day this is a they bougie had, place they had like ribs and mac and cheese day and like I was like oh my god I'm all in that. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, I mean, it's a really, it's a nice job. I, I really like it right now. Like the, the residents are all nice and management's been good to me. So I'm just riding it out for now until I find something else. Not and the so pay is good? Yeah, the pay is good. The pay is good for me right now. I, I do probably need to pick up more PRN shifts other, other places. But like mm-hmm. right now we're we're doing well, so I'm not worried. That's good, especially that you're in Pennsylvania. You're not having to. I'm assuming you don't have to worry about like the same type of like rent or. Well, you you have a house like mortgage as like a New York home because oh, it's no. crazy here. Yeah, that's why we left New York so that we can afford something <laughs> to put my family in. I mean, but yeah, I mean the the what we have here, I would probably say we would pay for twice the amount in New York for the mortgage. Yeah. You know. I mean, and we don't have much. It's just a two bed, two bath, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't but know. Yeah, but New York would be insane. Yeah, for sure. But I, I mean, where we are at, the neighborhood where we're at, the school district we're at. I mean, you just couldn't beat the prices for that. So, just an off-topic thing with the Pittsburgh Bills game going on. Who are you rooting for? Bills. <laughs> and I tell that to my residents. They're all, <laughs> everyone in the facility, you know, they're all Steelers fans. And I'm like, are you ready to get crushed, old man? Yeah, you're, well, you're crushing their pills. Yeah, like, <laughs> crushing. <laughs> Silent Night Crusher. This is your, this is the Bills of the Steelers. No, I mean, I, I I love 
because a lot of them are huge sports fans and like they know I'm a Giants fan. So they know my my team rankings go from Giants, Bills, and then Steelers. Mm-hmm. So I tell them like you just drew the unfortunate straw to to play against the Bills and it's gonna be a shit storm literally in terms <laughs> of weather. So it could be anyone's game to be honest, but you know they know they know who they, I they, am. they know. And then so just going back into nursing, since you were in grad school um, uh, originally for your first degree, would you ever do a grad school for nursing? Oh man, I thought about it a lot. I mean, I just don't know if I have like the the time. You know, mm-hmm. we have the one baby and now we have the second baby on, the, on way. the way. Yep. Congrats on that. Thank you, thank you. When when do you find out the the gender? Um we, is that the right word? The sex? I don't I don't even yes. know. Yes. <laughs> uh, we find out what they are on um what's it called? February fifth is the anatomy scan. <clears throat> nice. That, that's so, uh, kind of soon. Yeah, it is. It is kind of soon. It's very exciting. What they are. I, I, I want to know specifically so we can appropriately, you know, start buying shit because now it's like <laughs> we want to get, we have all of James's stuff, my son. Mm-hmm. We have all of his stuff, like his young baby stuff. So mm-hmm. like it would be so much of a, a, a convenience for us to just reuse that shit. Yeah. But then like if it turns out to be a girl, you know, I don't want to just give them blue stuff and they think, oh, uh, I don't want blue stuff. I have to respect what they are and their gender. It's 2024, Brian. We have to get with it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, I do want a girl, though. I want to complete the set. Kyla wants another boy. No, it's, it's fun. It's fun having one of each. It's uh, definitely, at least, you know, when you're old, you'll be taken care of. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Because the boy ain't going to do it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> boy ain't going to do it. So um, are, are you done after after this, you think? I don't know. It depends. Like, you know, my, our big plan is to come back to New York. And if we mm-hmm. came back to New York and the plan was to get a bigger place, then yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Because we have a bigger place and the job that I would get there would end up being probably twice as much as what I'm making here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, for sure, I would be willing to have more. I'll cap it at three. <laughs> snip, think, snip right after. <laughs> I think I think the the op, the the operation for the snip snip would be right after baby gets born for sure. <laughs> but um, no, I mean I honestly like I, I don't I don't mind having big family. It's just having the resources to the re- to, yeah. to sustain it. You know. That yeah, that's the thing. That's a that's a tough part. Well, like luckily, if you did move here, the pay is a lot more, but. Also, the expenses are super high. So, yeah, it'll be... It's a conversation worth having yeah. with yourself. Yeah, for sure. The, the pullout game got to be strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Just to go back into the move, like, obviously, we were all, like, super sad when you told us that you were uh, moving to, to Pennsylvania. The, the biggest thing was the, the pricing and all that. Yeah, because at that point, I mean, James was like, what, he was seven, eight months old. And like, Mm -hmm. we were just, we didn't want to just stay in her parents' house because that's where we were. Because it was, it by itself was just a small house. And like, you could see as each month came, like, it became smaller and smaller for him to move around in there. So, and there was nothing in our price range in the area. I mean, New York housing market is like an absolute joke at that time. Yeah. So, there were places that were available um in pittsburgh that we were interested in since her sister lived there and we we just decided to take the dive you know i mean we needed somewhere for him to grow um Mm -hmm. and we needed something to have of our own you know and granted when we first got there we rented just because like we needed to have like our job set up and then uh what's it called um find the right place which ended up being right across the street from her sister's house like, that's, that's we're, awesome we're little neighbors so like whenever we need someone to watch jamie like he he just runs across the street <laughs> we just kick him out the door and say go to go to auntie nina's <laughs> i didn't know that's how close you are yeah literally we're in a cul-de-sac and she's literally on the other side of the sack <laughs> nice yes <laughs> that that's awesome i didn't know you... we have to visit you guys 
while you're still down there. Oh, Got to you, figure man. that out. Oh yeah, we'd love to have you. You know, maybe maybe not in the winter because is the winters bad over there? No, it's it's not as bad as Buffalo. I mean, me, you and me both have experienced Buffalo winter, so like a winter is never going to be as bad. To, yeah. to you know what I mean? I, I I would say the only bad thing about it is how they handle it. Like you know how in Buffalo, like when shit when they knew something was coming, they were they're already like salting and plowing right. as they're going. Yeah, but like we'll know in advance here. Like you guys, it's gonna snow. Where's all the salt trucks? They won't do it until like the night of and like while it's snowing already. <laughs> while it's already snowing, I'm just like, oh, fuck it. You know it's gonna be a slushy mess in the morning. I can't complain after being in Buffalo where you were used to getting feet of snow. Feet. Feet, feet of snow feet. instead of inches. <laughs> like you can't be living in a place long term where you're counting feet of snow. So <laughs> they so handled true. their business. I mean, they were feet. they were they were ten toes down on the snow over there, so for sure they were. They knew how to handle it. And then you were talking about possibly doing like per diem work, PRN work. Um, what is what's your shift now for at the long term care? I'm is it twelve hour shift. So right now I'm doing three twelves. And oh, that's good. You don't really hear that for long term care places having no. twelve hour shifts. And they had to make it special for me. <laughs> oh, sh- they really wanted me to be there, and I told them, "Listen, I really want to work three twelves. And they're like, "Well, we don't really offer that. We do five eights. So I'm like, "Oh, that's a shame." And they're like, "Okay, let's let me <laughs> um, let me." That's a shame. Um, that's a shame. Well, as you're I mean, walking out the door, <laughs> that's a shame. I really like it here. It's like really nice. Like I'm looking around, like I totally want to work here. But no. But then I. But then they were like, "Let." There is somebody else here that is interested in working 12, so let me work around the schedule and let's see what we can do. So, yeah, I mean, it ended up working out. There's Now there's, like, three or four people that are working 12s in this facility. So, I mean, and it's nice for coverage because, like, I'll do my eight hours of being a nurse, and, like, if we're short on aides, I'll help out the aides for the last four hours, Oh, which helps me pick up some, you know, patient care skills that I never really had before, too, because in dialysis, I'm will they still pay you the, the nurse oh. rate? For... Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's 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 good because, like, I get a chance to work with the AIDS because, you know, the AIDS are the fucking backbones of the goddamn medical community, I feel. Because yeah, they do a lot of backbreaking work. So, and plus, my wife is an aide, and if I didn't say that, she'd probably come downstairs and beat the shit out of me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I get I get a chance to learn how to you know, like learn how they work and what what makes me what what I could do to make their life more easy. You mm-hmm. know, because there's a lot of nurses that don't do shit for their aides. That's true. Which That's is a true. fucking shame because like you have so much time to. And I'll, I'll say this, if your time management skills are like on point where they need to be, and if mm-hmm. you're not getting like an admission or a discharge or what have you, you have a lot of time to help your aides. Mm-hmm. And true. if you're not doing it, then you are fucking up because that, you, that is a hundred percent true. You might be thinking you have an easy day, like, oh, I don't have to do anything because blah, blah, blah. But now the aides are looking at you like, He's just been sitting there for like five like, hours doing wow. jack shit while I'm <laughs> running around with my head cut off. Like, what kind of fucking guy is this? Like, you you have the opportunity to increase your relationship with your coworkers at that point. Why not do it? That, that's true because, like, when I was on the the floors um, before I moved to the lab where I'm wor- working at, um, when I used to precept the new nurses or the new new nurses would come up to me for resources and stuff, I'd be like. I was like, forget, uh, other than your preceptor, forget all the other nurses here right now. I was like, the person that's going to help you the most to get through your shift is going to be your aide, your PCA or your nurse's tech, whatever you want to call them, the, yep. the aide. If you're good with them, your day is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. They're going to do your blood draws. They'll help you with cleaning patients. Oh, yeah. And and if you're really good with them, they'll prioritize your tasks over others over everyone else yep but to be good with them you also have to show that you're willing to go the do, mile for them yeah go the mile for them you're, you're willing to help them out if they needed help yep. and even if it's it, it, like in the help usually instead of them answering the call light you do it yourself right like 
the small little things that you should probably do. Right. A lot of nurses don't. Like they just wait for their their tech or their aid to do it. But if you do it and you and you get whatever is needed done, get that bedpan, get that little Shasta soda. Right. Like, how hard is that? It's not. <laughs> right? It's really not, especially in a facility like mine where a lot of them are walkie-talkie. Like, you mm. can get up and help them do whatever they need. Oh, you need water for your humidifier? You're going to ask your <laughs> aide to do that when you have time? Just get the fucking distilled water. Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding me? It's like a 15-step walk for you. Like, But there are nurses in this facility that will just let people drown. Like, And it's a shame. Because some days they'll have they'll be overstaffed on nurses and they'll be mm-hmm. understaffed on techs or aides. And it's like you're expected at that point as a nurse, you have to help them. But then there's mm-hmm. a nurse there that will just fucking sit down and do her nurse work and like, like I'm not doing that. Over. Right. And it's just it's a goddamn shame because like, especially for this nurse that I'm thinking of specifically, they are a new nurse with oh, yeah. no medical background. <laughs> and they they are setting themselves up for failure by not learning these how to treat their AIDS. And it's been mm-hmm. brought up before, but it's just, I don't know. It's just not in there. I'm assuming this isn't a union job, is mm-hmm. it? Nope. So it's like when enough people complain, you're going to be out of a job. <laughs> right. Right. Like you, you have to be able to, especially now, especially now in this unit specifically, we are overstaffed on nurses. They didn't need me. But they wanted me. Wanted it. <laughs> so, Who wouldn't want you, man? <laughs> they wanted me. So I don't want to make it seem like I have a huge ego, but as, at the same time, it's like they took they want to make sure that they have quality nurses because they know they have nurses that aren't cutting it. So mm-hmm. when they're bereft or when they have a lot of nurses at this point, like you have to make sure that you are on your game or your hours are going to just start dwindling. Yeah, that's what I could imagine that they'll just start cutting hours. Like, ah, oh, this one's not really cutting it. We're paying mm. them to do the minimal. So maybe this is the one that we got to let go. <laughs> right. That That's wild. Like, I, that's something I've always like hated about, I guess, the nursing community. It's either the eating of the young or the stupid lazy ones. Oh, yeah. And it, it it's and if it's and if it's lazy and they're brand new, that's even worse because they're gonna be in the workforce for how long? And if they somehow start precepting people, they're gonna try to teach people that same exact way where it just doesn't cut it and makes no. the whole like profession look bad. Right. And uh, that sucks. And I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm I'm bullying this one nurse because I have personally went to this nurse and told them what they need to do mm-hmm. and they need to start like fixing their shit because like you don't want to be that nurse that people get stuck working with. Mm-hmm. And I didn't say it in so mean a way, but you know, I, but it's the same concept. Like you have to learn how to treat the people around you if you want to have success as a nurse. Mm-hmm. Like what's the one thing that they teach you empathy right like you have to empathize with the people not just your patients but your staff too like your your the people that are supporting you and your managers and things like that you have to understand where they're coming from to be a good nurse and if you can't do that if you're stuck in your little world i mean you're just setting yourself up for failure like and, and that's what she's doing and that's what's happening and it's just did she like did she take the the advice or she just kind of like no. let it go in one ear, what? One at one ear, out the other. Garbage. <laughs> yeah, and th- and that's the thing too. It's like I guess when people start eating their young, they see people like this very often, so that's why they start to eat their young a little bit, mm-hmm. which is a shame. But it's there's no excuse for it. I mean, you have to kind of just learn to listen to the feedback of others and not take it personally, like credit, like taking a criticism is like one of the best things you could do as a nurse it's how you learn to be better it's like 100 percent. it's like yeah i mean i'm not going to be perfect i'm like i don't know how to to connect the whatever what's it called a mickey port to a feeding <laughs> tube at some point i that's something i learned recently so like mm-hmm. when they're telling me like how to do it i'm not taking it personally i'm taking it as a learning experience whereas a, this nurse will take it as like I know what I'm doing. I've learned this already in nursing school. I'm like, 
No, you didn't. Oh, yeah. You. you sure? You sure about that? You sure about that? <laughs> you learned this in nursing school? No, no. <laughs> you it's sure just, about that? <laughs> and it's just sad. It's sad, but at the same time, like me, as just a grunt worker now, I'm just I'm doing what I do, and I'm helping who I can help. That's what I do now. I'll, I tried my piece with her, and she still decides to be like that. Then that's on management now. Yeah, you, you gave your two cents in a nice way, and she just not taking it. No, no, it is what it is. You can't, you can't, you can't fix everything. So do they offer overtime for you guys there? Not right now, no. Well, because you said there's they, too many nurses. They're offering overtime for nurses to work as aid. Mm. So that's where you would have to pick up. And lo and behold, not a lot of nurses want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I am, because why the fuck not? I'd rather. Yeah, you already know the area. You you're getting paid your rate anyway. Right. Do they treat you differently when you pick up those aid? Um, I don't think so. No, not so much. It's because that would be shitty. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't. They don't. I mean, they they treat everyone pretty fairly across the board. Like, it's not like a place that really like will give shit to AIDS like quite quite frequently, like other places will. Mm -hmm. Um, no, they treat they treat you pretty well across the board there. So I wouldn't say. I think that the one thing is like they expect me to know everything about being an aide. I don't. So yeah, the, the the roles are different, and it's a total different role. So it's and the, the thing is, like for a long term facility, like a lot of the residents have their what's it called their routines, and mm -hmm. the aides know these routines better than the nurses ever will. Mm -hmm. Like who gets up when, who goes to dinner when, who needs to have the shower when. Like mm -hmm. I I feel like I do better in support of aides, like like having an aide with me, but. I think alone as an aide, I'd be like, eh, I'll do my best, but you know, <laughs> I'm not going to get the shower done. If that's true. <laughs> my timing isn't good on that. <laughs> no. I'd be lucky if I get everybody in bed before 10. <laughs> I can't even get my kids to sleep by 10. So <laughs> exactly. like, I'm not going to get a grown-ass adult. <laughs> he goes to sleep at 12. God help him. Just sleep. But dang. So... The eventual move back to New York is what two years down the line, maybe a year, two years down the line. Yeah. What are you gonna do with the house that you have now? Are you gonna rent it out? I'm hoping to rent it out because um it would be a, a waste, I feel. Like it would be a nice little source of income because we can mm -hmm. definitely rent it out for more than what we're paying for it right now. Because the people yeah. right next to us are renting and they're definitely paying more than what we're paying right now more than your mortgage yeah so that, yeah. that's cool cool to have too because technically you could still say it's your primary residence and then for the first like year or so while you're settling back in you could do like travel contracts mm -hmm. saying you're still a pittsburgh resident and just rake in some money here in new york in new york yeah i hope is, that's legal right i don't, I don't yeah. know too much about <laughs> uh, i'm pretty sure as long as as long as it's your residence <laughs> <laughs> right, we're gonna have to delete this section of the tape. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll look into the legalities of it, but that that'd be awesome to have. Yeah, you know, I feel like that's what a lot of people do with like um, wherever they work, wherever they were from before. They technically just keep their house as a as like their primary residence. Primary residence. Mail out. Good good little way to make it work. Yeah, that's a nice little thing I didn't even think of. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, man. So, what's the What's the plan for you for the next like year until you move here? Um, let's see. I guess work as much as I can, make as much money as I can, and spend it all on the baby that's about to be born in June. So that's really that's, that's really, really that's all it's set up to be right now, man. And if anyone wanted to reach out to you because they're going through some hardships, like you went through two hardships already with nursing where you didn't quit which i'm very proud of you for because obviously great job but they put you through the rinker of just being assholes to you yeah if people wanted to talk to you about how to make it through nursing with bad experiences how would they get in contact with you well i am on instagram a p q u i j a n o that's really 
all I look at. That's all you got. <laughs> uh, I'm an older millennial. I don't do these uh, Snapchat the talkies, Snapchats, and the talk ticks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is anybody still on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm on Instagram. You can DM me there. That's fine. If you were going to give advice to any new nurse trying to get into the workforce, what would you give? If you're going to find a job, no doubt, nurse, new nurses, you're going to find a job. Um, if it doesn't feel like it, it's working out, try. And if it still doesn't work out, then there's always going to be a place for you in the nursing world. There's a there's another specialty. There's another hospital. There's another a clinic that will make you feel like you are at home. Don't feel like you have to suffer through things just because they tell you that's what you have to do. Like a lot of the big the big talk in nursing schools, you have to do a year of med surge just because you have to get your skills up. But a lot of the classmates that I went to school with, they went straight into the ICU. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to do something, go for it. There's a place for you in nursing for sure. Um, don't let a bad experience define your career. Let it, you know, push you into finding something that's a better fit for it. Uh, that's really good. And last thing, would you, would you go back into dialysis? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, not with her, for sure, but like with a, probably with another company. I'm trying to see if there's like a casual position that I could do, like a PRN position I can do in dialysis. I'd love to. I really like dialysis. It was an interesting um uh, specialty in nursing for me. So of course, yeah, I would love to go back to Niles. That'd be pretty cool because like from what I've seen, a lot of those companies like pretty much took over everything other than in like the big hospital systems where they actually hire their own to do their own dialysis. I just right. always wondered how that worked because the hospitals around where, uh, where you used to live in, you know, where, 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 where we live, they're all like outsourced to those companies that like you worked for. Fresenius, DeVita. Yeah. yeah, they're all pretty much in a lot of the hospitals. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that before. I thought they were directly hired like to the hospital, the hospital system, like how it is in the in New York City, but apparently not. <laughs> no, it's just easier for them to set up because then the, the they know that they're getting like dialysis experience people. They have all the machines that are linked to the to the companies. Like Fresenius has their own dialysis machines, so they bring all that in when they when they contract with the company. So it's just easier for the hospital to just set that up as opposed to like mm. doing the unit on their own. That makes sense, for, especially for like the smaller hospitals yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. For sure. But again, man. Thanks for hanging out with me for an hour. I appreciate you. Hopefully we can do this with like Mark. That'd be, yeah. I'd love to hear his, ah, oh man, I don't know if I would actually like to hear his uh, thoughts from the director's standpoint. Oh, Jesus. He's I don't be, know if I would like to hear it. Cause I remember we, we, like we, we, we've had like many arguments when we were both drunk and <laughs> I was like, you know what? Let's not talk about work. Right now. That's probably good podcast though. So I mean, probably that's, would con be. that's good content. <laughs> All right, man. I'm going to end it right here. Thanks for hanging out with me, man. Thanks, guys. Love you, bro. Love you.